From Montana's news leader, this is the MTN New News. Good afternoon and thanks for joining us on the new news. I'm Diane Parker. Miller has our Friday forecast, plus a new direct flight takes off from Montana to California. But first, our top story. It is Cat Grizz weekend and another chapter in Montana's fiercest football rivalry will soon be written. Saturday at noon, the number three UM Grizzlies host the number four MSU Bobcats in the 122nd Brawl of the Wild. Getting a last minute ticket to this game is almost as difficult as getting your hands on a Montana Millionaire ticket. They are going very fast and if you do find a seat, expect to pay at least $500. As MTN's Haley Monaco reports, many fans won't sell their tickets no matter what you offer. I don't think I would sell them. I don't think I would. Fifteen hundred? I don't think I would. I, just because it's so much, it's such a fun atmosphere. For 122 years, the Brawl of the Wild game has both divided and united Montana. While many Cats fans can't stand the Grizz and Grizz fans loathe the Cats, each year they all come together in one stadium. It was Cat Grizz game. Everybody wants them, so. You can sell your tickets probably triple the value for what they are, double or triple probably. I had two guys last year offer me 600 a ticket. Rick Steinmetz, the custodian at Billings Senior High, has 11 season tickets in his name and a line of people always no. wanting to buy them. Turned them down. <laughs> That's yeah. right, Rick refuses to sell his Cat Grizz tickets, a principle he's stuck to all 20 years he's been a season ticket holder, no matter the asking price. So it may surprise you, he also refuses to set foot in Washington Grizzly Stadium when the game is in Missoula, and he's far from alone. One Cats fan told us they refuse to even get gas in Missoula. And it's not just Cats fans. Visit fan pages like this one, and you'll find one comment after another from Grizz fans who refuse to set foot in Bozeman. Citing everything from harassing shouts to stories of rocks thrown at them while attending the Brawl of the Wild. I root for them all year long, I honestly do. But when they face each other, I'm a Bobcat fan. A state divided, yet united. Because you can bet no matter whether you bleed blue and gold or maroon and silver, most of Montana will be watching come Saturday in one way or another as their teams take the field. Go Cats! In Billings, Haley Monaco, <laughs> MTN News. The Montana Department of Corrections reaches an agreement to transfer more than 100 inmates from the state prison to a correctional facility in Arizona. 30 made the move this week, step one in a plan to reduce overcrowding. MTN's Jonathan Ambarian has the latest on the deal. During the 2023 legislative session, Montana lawmakers agreed to spend almost $8 million over the next two years to house 120 Montana inmates in an out-of-state prison facility. This week, the Montana Department of Corrections confirmed that they finalized the contract and transported the first group of inmates. The state reached an agreement with the private prison operator CoreCivic to transfer inmates to the Saguaro Correctional Center in Eloy, Arizona. CoreCivic already works with the state, managing the prison in Shelby. The Department of Corrections said they selected which inmates would be transferred based on whether they wanted to volunteer and on things like their custody level, health and mental health needs, and how close they are to parole. They said the inmates would have access to comparable services as they would in a Montana facility. State leaders say Montana State Prison has been overcrowded for a long time, and it's had a trickle-down effect on local jails, as the department hasn't been able to move inmates to prison as quickly. It's really crucial that we figure out a way to deal with this. We may have longer-term goals to build additional prison capacity in Montana. We've got to solve this right now. And so acquiring these beds allows us to free up space in the local detention facilities, which will create a much better situation. Republican Representative Bill Mercer of Billings told MTN if this appears to be a more efficient option than expanding prison capacity within the state, leaders will at least need to consider extending it. Democrats in the legislature were critical of the agreement for sending public money out of state and said it would give Montana less chance for oversight. When we send people out of state, particularly adults, um, we don't have the same control and oversight over what we're doing. It, it comes down to oversight and where the buck stops. And that's that's the problem with this. I mean, these are these are Montanans, you know. 
Representative Emma Kerr Carpenter of Billings told MTN she believed this situation could have been avoided if stakeholders at all levels of the justice system had been brought together to work on a broader solution. In a news release, CoreCivic said they plan to receive all of the Montana inmates by the end of December. In Helena, Jonathan Amberian, MTN News. It's about to be a whole lot easier to get to Los Angeles. Allegiant is offering a nonstop flight from Billings to LAX starting May 16th. Flights will take off on Thursdays and Sundays. Round trip flights are currently going for as little as $118. Schwann's, the iconic food delivery service, is leaving Montana. The company is reducing the number of states it serves to just 18, closing 90 delivery sites, including the one in Lockwood. Schwann's rebranded as Yellow last year and will now focus operations on the East Coast with most facility closures coming in the western U.S. A man who's worked in the Great Falls Public School District for 17 years is retiring. After serving as superintendent since 2019, Tom Moore is retiring at the end of the school year. Moore said it has been a decision that's been his for the past three years to not pursue a new contract, given that he'd be 65 this year. He plans to stay in the community and spend more time with his children and grandchildren. Um, there's lots of challenges out there still, but I, I believe strongly in our public education system and our community schools. The board hopes to detail its final plan for the superintendent search at its next meeting, November 27th. Our law enforcement officers constantly put their lives on the line to protect ours, and often it's a thankless job. But one Helena police officer received a well-deserved award Thursday. The Helena Exchange Club recognized patrol officer Andrew Marr with the Officer of the Year Award. Marr received a plaque and a $500 donation to a nonprofit of his choice. The Helena Police Department also got a $500 donation from the Exchange Club. Very honored to be picked out of um, our entire department and a uh, very humbling experience. Just really trying to wrap my head around it at this point. And that's a look at some of the day's top stories. Happy Friday, everybody, and TGIF boom as we cruise on into the weekend. Our local forecast coming up, but first, what's going on across the U.S. today? Let's take a look at those weather headlines. Northern Florida Peninsula, heavy rain is easing up. We've had some almost tropical situations down there, really pumping a bunch of uh, rain into the area, so luckily that's going to start to ease up. Western U.S., unsettled weather expanding into the weekend. Northern Plains into the eastern U.S. We do have a cold front that will usher gusty winds in and much colder temperatures all the way through Sunday. Here locally, we have high pressure keeping us dry, uh, warmer than average. Uh, we're looking at temperatures today, though, 40s, 50s, and 60s across the region. We'll have a complete look at your forecast coming up. And there's a big game on tap tomorrow. That forecast coming up, too. A Great Falls family has parted ways with a beloved spruce tree that sat for years in their front yard. But it is all for a good cause and festive reason. When Jill Whistler and her family moved into the home in 1978, that spruce tree in the front yard was about 12 feet high. Now much larger, it adorns the front steps of the Civic Center for the city's Christmas display. The Whistler's son Mark and Steve have fond memories of the tree not just because of the holiday season. We used to play basketball out in the front yard a lot um, with a lot of people, and it was always like the worst trajectory for someone to miss that basketball, and it would go flying off into the pine tree. You'd have to chase yeah. it in there. I would not be surprised if, as they are taking the tree, if they don't find frisbees and wiffle balls and oh yeah, basketballs, and I, I mean, who knows. Look at that. Well, after being removed, that tree was placed on a flatbed truck and transported to the Civic Center with a police escort.